<clears throat> Greetings. We are at about the six month mark in our response to the global pandemic. I continue to distract myself with works of art around my house. Today, I'd like to retrace the steps I took to interpret a rather mysterious image. I came across this natural history print, which had likely been cut out of a book, as has been the fate of so many decent illustrations, especially hand-colored etchings like this one. The sheet is fairly small, about six and a half by 10 inches, roughly corresponding to a standard publishing size called octavo, the same size as many natural history illustrations, including the uh, small second edition of John James Audubon's Birds of America. The surrounding pages of text were likely discarded and the prints sold separately. The only identifying markings in the margins of this print are a publisher's credit, A. Fullerton & Co., London and Edinburgh, at the bottom center, and a plate number, the Roman numeral 12, at the top left. No artists, etchers, or printers' names, or even initials are present. So I have to do some Googling to find out more. I still don't know who the actual artist is, but the page comes from a multi-volume set of books called A History of the Earth and Animated Nature, first published in 1774 and attributed to the novelist and playwright Oliver Goldsmith, although I suspect most of the scientific heavy lifting was collected from the research of Georges-Louis Leclerc, Comte de Buffon, and other naturalists. It was a popular compendium and was issued in several editions over the next century or so. Fullerton seems to have been the publisher from only about 1850 to 1864, so that tells me the approximate age of my particular print. I was immediately drawn to the image because it struck me emotionally, which most scientific illustrations do not. This felt like a scene from some sort of fairy tale, with two characters having a chat. I guess that the big shaggy one with the bushy tail was probably a wolf, even though he or she was colored in pale blue to make it stand out from the background. It is indeed an American gray wolf. But what's up with the other character's magical patterning on its back? Turns out to be a cape jackal, sometimes called a black back jackal. Here's a photo. Maybe the artist never actually saw one. The book was published in the UK, and the jackal is native to South Africa, especially in the early days of attempts at global compendiums Artists had to draw from verbal descriptions or taxidermy of dubious accuracy. Anyway, here she is in her magic robe, standing on her hind legs so that she can look the wolf in the eyes while they talk. No real scientist today would tolerate my anthropomorphic interpretation, but I simply can't help myself, and I feel the image encourages it. Scientific accuracy is clearly not the top priority of an interaction between two quadrupeds native to separate continents. On the title page for one of Goldsmith's volumes, a polar bear strolls casually behind a nonchalant tiger, a clear signal from the get-go that this book is not going to be constrained by contemporary standards of scientific accuracy. And this is what I love about the evolution of natural history, watching the progress of chaotic blurs come slowly into sharper focus. I'm nostalgic for that halfway point in the process. To underscore the vintage of the 1850s print and to play up its reading as a storybook illustration, I chose a frame that imitated what might be found in an average middle-class home in the mid to late 19th century. I hope you are amused by my unscientific interpretation. Stay tuned for more Art From Home videos from the NIU Art Museum.